You are watching CIO TV by Enterprise IT World, a production of Accent Info Media. See, oh, what I feel is like uh, everyone, all of us in IT, uh, we, as rightly mentioned by you, we are not uh, IT managers or, uh, you know, uh, we, we are the IT leaders. We are not just the leaders of IT, at the same time, we are leading the business. All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to CIOTV.live, a production of Accent Info Media. Today, my guest is Mr. Mohammad Ajimuddin. He's IT manager for Al Rawawi Dairy, uh, UAE. Uh, he specialized in FMCG industry, having excellent communication skill, skill in business process, gathering and mapping, process strong leadership. Uh, he possesses strong leadership, negotiation, communication, team management, budget management, vendor management skill, and lot many. And he has also received so much, so many of awards and recent times he has also won a very prestigious COVID-19 uh, superhero or technology summit and awards for Middle East and Africa. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, welcome, I mean, uh, I, I thank all my audiences also. Of CIO TV. So, uh, COVID 19 on the onset hasn't been good for everyone. Being in a dairy farm, which is necessity for the people, in a dairy organization, how have you managed uh, your infrastructure so that your workers on staying at uh, uh, in your office or working from home, they have, uh, uh, you know, helped uh, the consumers uh, to receive their daily needs? Uh, Sanjay, uh, uh, good question in uh, current context, I, I believe, yeah, uh, to start with. Uh, I'm not only heading Al Rawabi, I have been uh, heading another company, we are part of uh, Emirates Rawabi Group. I'm taking care of another poultry farm, which is a leading poultry farm in uh, UAE, which is uh, Emirates National Food Company, which is with the brand name of Al Rawabi Poultry. Okay. So, I take care of the Rabi Dairy Company here and a lot of the poultry farms under Emirates Rabi. So we, yeah, uh, during these past five to six months, it was really challenging in terms of handling the operations, running the operations. I always, as always, uh, I always say my staff, IT whoever, uh, I mean, we hire in Al Rabi or uh, in, in, in any of your business, in both the companies, that once the company, once the cow gives the milk, it cannot, the cow will not, is not going to take back the milk. So as as it is very critical, you know that all the FMCG business being perishable in, in, in nature of the product, uh, it, it's bound to perish. Uh, so timely action, it makes you run, it makes everyone run. It's not only sales and marketing of the production teams, but at the same time, who is supporting it, uh, be it uh, IT or finance or uh, audit or whoever it is, a part of the FMCG business, especially the dairy business and the chicken business, we have to run continuously. There is no stop. So, uh, as the business is running uh, mainly on the IT, uh, without the IT, uh, the, the operations, certainly we say that uh, the operations are driven by sales and the production, but at the same time, without the backbone being IT, I consider the IT to be the backbone of the operation because without that, you can't imagine running your operations, uh, taking your, generating your revenue, whatever you generate your revenue, you cannot be recorded or the cost cannot be uh, measured. Uh, so, uh, during this time, uh, as uh, just to give a brief of our company also, uh, when I talk about this before, before I go into that, I have to tell that, okay, we run around 300 routes, a fleet of vehicles uh, across UAE and Oman. Uh, in, I'm talking about purely from Al Rawabi Dairy Company now. So to run this, we have to deliver the milk, fresh milk on a daily basis to all the consumers being, uh, milk being a necessity product, a basic necessity. Uh, and everyone needs it in the morning, fresh milk on a daily basis. So over 300 vans are delivered in uh, these two countries. To run the operations, uh, the trucks have to leave at 4 o'clock max. And we, similar to before pandemic uh, of this COVID-19, and even during this time, we have to maintain the same team and operations have to go on without any break breakdown. Uh, and everything depends on the IT, uh, as all the salesmen of, of, of these 300 vans who carry, they carry the devices, the handheld terminals, the devices, mobile computers, to deliver 
the invoice uh, to generate the invoices on the routes. So we have to be there and we should ensure that the trucks leave at four o'clock from the company here. So there shouldn't be any breakdown from the system. Uh, when, when we talk of the system, it is your SAP system, uh, which produces, which, use, which we use to generate our production uh, inventory, uh, whatever is produced, we need to update that inventory into the system. At the same time, once it is produced in SAP, it has to be transferred to each of these 300 devices. So unless and until you transfer the customer details, pricing your products and your route details and the salesman details every customer every route carries around 50 to 60 customers so that means every route delivers at least 50 customers on a daily basis our 300 products so a combination of 50 customers into 300 products it's hell lot of everyone every customer has got its own they have got their own pricing, special pricing or discount price. So managing it manually is not at all possible. Every Everything is driven by the system. So uh, if it will really badly uh, affect our uh, revenue and profitability if we don't, uh, if the systems uh, are, uh, you know, break down. So in this COVID-19 time also, the major problem started right from uh, arranging the, the, you know, all of a sudden when it stopped, not everyone, who is running the show, who's running the systems, especially from the operation side also. Uh, we, we had to, I had to arrange the computers and the laptops for, for them, you know. And all of a sudden we started, stopped working. Uh, people who are there in the, who are working in the production facility and the sales, they have to be physically present, yes. The people who are, uh, uh, who are managing the show on the systems, especially the operation side, the finance and uh, the IT uh, and the sales guys, in the back office to support them, we have to arrange them the computers, the laptops. So it was the short time. Not everyone uses the laptops, you know that. Uh, so we, we, the rest of the guys have to be uh, who are working on the desktops have to be, you know, leased or the rented laptop have to be arranged, and uh, uh, ensuring that they they, they don't uh, misuse the systems or at the same time security part of you when they are connecting to the VPN. Uh, getting into the network of the company, we need to uh, deploy with uh, all sorts of security uh, tools like endpoint security and email facility. We already, we, we, we are on Office 365, yes. So uh, apart from that, uh, the, the VPN to connect and co come into the network of the company, we had to arrange for VPNs and, uh, you know, endpoint security on those laptops and uh, computers. This was uh, a lot of lot of challenges were there in terms of arranging the inventory at the same time doing all the security measures. So that's that's how we manage it, and some uh, somehow there was no hiccups or breakdowns. And uh, luckily, God's grace, we were able to run the show without any breakdowns. And uh, to say that they, none of the routes were stopped. Uh, and uh, all the sales and we, we have been, I, I think our customers who are watching us, they should be able to tell us that there was um, milk was, milk and juice and all the dairy products was available. In, in fact, the poultry products also were available for uh, for the customers, for our customers in the market. How, what is your infrastructure look like? Are you on-prem or have you hosted uh, your infra or are you completely in cloud? One part you said that you are in office 0365. And uh, second uh, part of this is that how many workers, IT workers are working from home because your job needs or your kind of business needs people, even the IT workers to be on-prem. Yeah. Uh, Sanjay, as I mentioned that uh, if you talk about infrastructure, uh, uh, when it comes to infrastructure, we have emails in Office 365. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, our SAP, which, is, uh, which we have implemented in the year 2017, we are a 30 years old company and we have been working with other products and solutions before. And uh, now being a manufacturing company, we have to have a very solid uh, system which will uh, give a right cost to us. Uh, and, and it covers uh, each and every business process of the company, right from finance to costing, to production, to sales, to procurement, to inventory, to manufacturing, to maintenance. So to cover all this, uh, we, we decided to go with SAP uh, in 2016. And we have the whole 2017 one year, uh, God's grace, we were able to successfully cover each and every process or operations of our company in SAP. We were able to implement within one year time. 
so which which covers almost all the core modules of sap including our financial reporting and uh, everything was done uh, in sap within one one year time uh, so including all your interfaces with different systems so coming to the infrastructure sap is in cloud yes it's a on prem version hosted in cloud okay so there are around uh, 300 users correct on this system uh, uh, users who use the system Uh, right from finance and maintenance and uh, production quality uh, sales and distribution uh, all across all the core modules of sap at the same time in addition to it we also use uh, our revenue generating software which is uh, which is uh, van sales which is to carry the devices on the route by the salesman that take it uh, on a daily basis uh, in each device we put across or or we integrate from sap system Uh, customers for each each route specifically it carries the uh, customer details uh, the pricing of each and every customer uh, and and all the inventory uh, whatever is produced for that particular route and the special price of each and every customer uh, for each and every sku they they purchase from us so that's what uh, when it comes to van sales we have when it comes to infrastructure we have van sales uh, it is on premise yeah Uh, uh, at the same time, SAP is in cloud, and the rest uh, emails and all uh, Office three sixty five. Have you have you moved into have you thought of moving into uh, HANA or S four HANA kind of? I was just asking you maybe uh, SAP will stop uh, uh, giving uh, supports to its older versions. Um, I mean, what I'm hearing, and they want to migrate all the customers to S S four HANA or HANA even. Sanjay, as uh, we have just gone live in uh, from first of January 2018, at that point of time, we decided to go with ECC, okay, the traditional one on yeah. HANA DTS, on okay. HANA DTS, just okay. on HANA. Yeah. But we did not go with S4 HANA. The reason yeah. being that we were not ready. Uh, the special a few few of the core modules, I would say like uh, DSD module of SAP, uh, which is required for our van sales and all, which was it was not matured enough. For this market, at least for middle market, yes. Uh, you know, when a new product comes in, there in Europe and US, there is uh, directly from this uh, principal owners of the product like SAP, they they have uh, support, uh, upfront support. But in Middle East, we may face a lot of challenges because of that. We did not decide to go with uh, S4 HANA at that point of time, so we went with ECC on HANA. So yes, roadmap is given initially for two 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 zero two five for SAP to migrate all those customers who are on traditional uh, ECC to move move by two zero two five. But I am coming to here. I mean, recently I'm hearing that it is still extended to two zero three zero. Some uh, they are still open. We have some more time to move. So we plan to move it maybe in two zero two one two zero two two two. We'll uh, try to move it to S four. Three aspects that we can discuss now. One is that customer satisfaction, and second one is that dealer management. You are not. I suppose that you are not supplying to the uh, consumers directly, definitely through, through some dealer network. So um, there is another software, DMS kind of thing that you might be working on or implementing, or SAP might be having that module as well. And um, when your your uh, suppliers are moving out of your premise and Moving into different alleys, different uh, you know roads. Are you uh, tracking? How are you tracking them? Do you have any uh, IoT kind of device or sensor-based uh, you know solutions installed into the 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 trucks or the uh, you know supplies so that you can keep the track of those things? Even at the dealer place, uh, when uh, you the time to come to replenish your products, uh, the racks also. Um, how are you managing those things? uh see sanjay now uh, to if you if you, if i address your first question uh, how do we manage our uh, inventory or, or or the fleet itself the routes are tracked through fleet management software which is implemented law back in 2007 in fact we have been using almost for 12 to 13 years now uh, typically now i think uh, it is uh, almost everyone is using that fleet management software to track all your vehicles through geo coding all of our customers are geo coded so So uh, with that we we track uh, our vehicles. All the sensors are fit into the vehicles to track your harsh braking of the vehicle, idling of the vehicle. How I mean, uh, and the chillers whether he is switching off or switching off the chiller because the product being perishable product, we need to see also the temperature of the chiller doesn't 
go be, uh, exceed or it, it it is you know it should be always maintained at 4 to 5 degrees of uh, temperature if it's exceeding that the product gets uh, damaged you know expired uh, immediately so we can't do that we can't compromise on the quality of the product so we maintain that so we ensure that it is regularly monitored so the sensors are uh, fitted fit to your heart breaking so that the vehicle is not misused by the sales uh, drivers uh, to have uh, uh, less maintenance of the tra tracks the sensors are for the chillers as i mentioned at the same time for your idling so that they they don't park the vehicle and sleep somewhere uh, you know that's all so yeah. we track the vehicles completely at the same time it is also we measure the overlapping of the vehicle so that the uh, you reduce your fuel wastage by not crossing into the area of the other salesman you know uh, there is, there will be a lot of areas where you try to uh, enter into the other area and spend fuel on uh, taking u turns and going to other areas to solve the routes of other areas uh, other other routes uh, customers of other routes so that that way we monitor that so everyone has we define the boundary or the geo location of each route so all those customers fall under, fall under that uh, geo location has to be served by this that particular route only that's how we we manage that one Uh, to address your other other question, we don't have any agencies to deliver or the dealers to deliver to the consumers. All your all our customers, be it Koreka customers, that means hotels, restaurants, and cafeterias, A class customers, B class customers, supermarkets, hypermarkets, uh, I mean institutions, everywhere we deliver ourselves. There is no third party to deliver for us. Okay. Do you have any innovation around customer satisfaction? uh any any uh, you know bot services for customer queries or are you planning to do something around uh, chatbots or bot services or even i can ask you about rpa kind of thing since you have got uh, sap at the back end so certain workloads which are very manual and and that um, tends to make errors people are now these days implementing rpa solutions uh sanjay right question here uh, from your and uh, it's uh, nowadays if you see from few years it's always we, we we whenever we attend any webinars or seminars it's all about digital transformation mm. so digital transformation in, includes not only getting rid of the papers at the same time we need to reduce your uh, along with reducing uh, your cost on uh, stationery and paper uh, stationery and uh, you know unnecessarily printing of uh, papers and uh, your your cartridges and all those things it's also to have workflows seamless seamless integration with your multiple systems and uh, and also when you talk about digitalization uh, and uh, it includes also rps at the same time digitalization uh, not only includes your workflows uh you have also you need to ensure that some places you need to do signatures also physical signatures right on the soft copies for that we have gone with a solution recently i have implemented it this year it is going on the implementation is going on for digital signatures same like if you have seen into lot of banks when you go there you sign it on the, before you withdraw the money you have to the, so the signature pads connected to the usbs of each and every signatory signatory uh, signature signature signatory authority who is signing on the papers so what we are doing is like all your supplier contracts or whatever the documentation internally which is moved in between the departments i'm implementing a solution during this year which is work is already going on project is under implementation phase uh, which will be through workflows all the documents will be digitally signed this is one part uh, i'm also working with one vendor project is not yet started to completely Uh, get rid of the papers in the coming year so this is for uh, have workflows completely like example all of our customer requests when it is uh, whenever we want to onboard a customer for that we need to go through approval process of uh, what what kind of sale we are going to what kind of revenue we are going to get what are the products will be sold into this customer what kind of revenue you are going to generate at the same time which products you want to buy so so for that we need to agree for some uh he, we need to have uh, kind of like license and agreement from the supplier uh, from the customer also like uh, municipality agreement and his uh, you know so all those documents we want to maintain as a soft copy and when you board a, on board a customer it has to go through certain approval processes because a lot of discounts are involved so it has to go through sales approvals and the finance approvals finally before it gets recorded to sap or gets created to sap system for that it's it it a lot of uh, manual paper moves here and there so for that also 
considering all that uh, onboarding of employees and multiple things i'm i'm, I'm going to implement a completely digital uh, platform uh, in in coming uh, days i'm already working on it uh, coming to rpa uh, we have already started the journey uh, last year i have implemented a com- uh, complete automated uh, solution of uh, procure to pay solution you know complete that has been already automated so all our suppliers who give our invoices Uh, goes through uh, is upgraded to SAP through RP only. And this year, I have implemented one more process which came to my mind that in a procurement department, if you see, a lot of guys will be sitting only doing what once the requisition internal purchase requests are made by individual departments to buy any anything whatever they want to buy in material. Once the purchase requisition is made, purchase department does what they will take these requisitions and. uh submit to the suppliers give it to the suppliers ask them uh, for the pricing and uh, the finally they will do a bidding of that or do a comparison sheet so that has also been automated this year so what we are doing is now that is being done through rp so what once once in sap it reaches to a purchase department any user once he receives the purchase request from any department immediately he will route it system will do automatically the rpa does what is uh, what the rpa uh, looks after for e- for those materials it will look who are the suppliers in our database so it will automatically automatically send email to all the suppliers requesting to fill the template excel template against each material the price so once they send the one uh, once the supplier sends back the pricing and the terms and conditions system rpa does Uh, takes note of all those emails and do a comparison sheet so yes. here the here the purchase department doesn't have to waste their time doing this work so complete purchase comparison sheet will be re- uh, made ready by in an excel sheet by the rpa itself so to be presented in front of the management to just to decide on whichever the best vendor based on the pricing and terms and conditions of the delivery lead time and all those things so this is another automation which uh, which i have done during this year so uh, up to now two process have two, two processes have been automated moving forward again it's if you look at rpa i think in it uh, in my life what i have seen is the best roi which you get in it is upfront visibility of your roi is through rp so uh, it it re- immediately reduces your fts fixed time employees you can reduce it immediately and uh, with uh, in, uh, you also have accuracy and efficiency and makes the things faster to so rpa so, uh, so it's not it's never never ending journey mm. so i feel like we'll be continuing everyone is going to continue uh, with uh, implementing and automating lots and lots of uh, processes like bank reconciliation can be done moving forward yeah. and a lot of utility bills can be uh, it can be especially in companies where like in our case we have around 1500 employees or two sorry 2200 employees in this case you have uh, multiple departments are there where you have lot of telephone bills which will be which will be coming that all can be automated and charged directly into sap you can charge to the cost center mm-hmm. all this billing and all can be automated so going at lot of lot of work is there on our okay okay next question is that uh, you are today what budgeting so these days uh, the it leaders are finding budget to be hard to come from the cfo and management um uh, you know the management is looking out of the business business continuity uh, are you also facing similar kind of challenge uh, contracts on a budget uh, whenever you go uh, or your for your existing projects uh, which are already in the pipeline you have already taken the approval are you facing the budget constraint from your cfo or the uh, managing director or the management uh to answer this question whatever has been already budgeted uh, the projects have already uh, started uh, we yeah. are already working on those projects so uh, there is no room for backing off from there okay yes but moving forward i don't know we are still working on the budgets so we have not had a, even a single uh, meeting until now uh, within the coming week or next week we are going to have a meeting so hopefully i don't know yes there will be a tough time Uh, for me to persuade them to go ahead with uh, many 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 projects which uh, which we have planned for the which i have planned for the next year uh, i don't know how far it goes yes i can feel the heat yes uh, like other uh, other other people uh, other companies the market who are facing challenges i may also feel it uh, overcome i mean everyone is facing the challenges yes 
it's not we are not just isolated or we are not just alone who are facing challenges when it comes to budgeting uh, or 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 you know uh, running our business and operations during this pandemic so i, I expect that it is going to happen to me also i okay. hope so that uh, yeah, it goes through okay okay now now the question is coming that are you are you becoming a business leader from being it leader you are already an it leader now so the the cios or the it uh, you know the the it heads or the it managers those who are leading the organization from the it perspective they are also becoming business leader it means that you are also part of that decision making of a uh, business outcome then only uh, things can move in a right the right direction are you also thinking that direction certainly sanjay because you see nowadays uh, it is not uh, a cost center anymore uh, we i i being uh, having an experience of almost 20 22 years in the industry uh, what i see is like we previously we used to be looked upon as a cost center yeah but at the same time now what i see is in every decision making whatever uh, the business uh, ceo ceos or cfos take the decisions they certainly involve the cios and the it leaders okay so final question i'm coming to you is that uh, do you have any suggestion for your peer group um, you know it leaders in say in the similar industry or uh, some other industry although you enumerated certain uh, suggestion while uh, in our discussion but do you have any specific advice or or the suggestion uh, to the uh, people in your ranks See, oh, what i feel is like uh, everyone all of us in it uh, we as rightly mentioned by you we are not uh, it managers or uh, you know uh, we, we are it leaders we are we should be we are leaders you know basically we we lead the teams uh, we, we 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 are not just the leaders of it at the same time we are leading the business so exactly. we should be taking proactive measures especially in case of like the situation like covid 19 god forbid we don't know what is going to happen moving forward something else may come up also uh, to run the show to run the operations we have to have solid security system also i think i think this is most imp- most required most important uh, earlier we used to uh, where, where the work used to happen on site very rarely people used to connect and work remotely now we need to take care of uh, from security point of view also so we need to be prepared in uh, in all the circumstances forcing those circumstances we need to prepare ourselves at the same time uh when it when we talk about uh, now core it we should not be just thinking about it at the same time when we talk about core it also uh, like everything is moving toward digitization nowadays so i think uh, we should be working on digitizing our solutions uh, connecting each and every tool be it erp to whatever solutions we have whatever systems you run in the company to get to reduce the cost in running your operations basically so to have seamless integration with multiple systems build interfaces uh to support and uh, run the oper- operations without any breakdowns all right thank you very much uh, ajim for coming on board and speaking to cio tv dot live it has been fantastic and um, learning from you uh, from your candid uh, version of what you are doing and what is there in the pipeline uh, you s- stay safe uh, thank you thank you sanjeev thank you everyone who is watching the cio tv and uh, really appreciate and thank you all for watching and uh, giving me opportunity to speak on on, on behalf of al rawabi and uh, my other uh, uh, you know giving my insights about uh, the, the the experience what i have uh, in this industry thank you very much all right thank you